Well, before I do the uh, is on. Before I do the animal crossing, <laughs> and I'll first uh, do the previous one. Very cool. Any other thoughts on uh, on either the Broadway or the uh, the Animal Crossing challenge, uh, folks? Uh, I'm in the same boat of I don't really like all I know about is about Animal Crossing is everything I've been seeing on the internet um, since it you know since everyone else other than me seems to be playing it. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure what to do there, but I do need to go back and do Broadway because I'm a big Broadway fan. So there i have a lot more i can do um and have an idea of what i'm looking at <laughs> very good yeah I, I know that i know that tom mock has been pretty pretty into animal crossing so as as the kind of curator of tidy tuesday i think he was particularly excited to be able to uh to use this <laughs> data set i don't blame him there are you know a lot of people playing that right now so yeah very much so yeah Yeah, but one, one, one thing I like about um, the, the whole Tidy Tuesday idea is even when you start and you have no idea what's happening, someone comes up with some summary through a visualization, then you, you're like, okay, th th this makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I could think about something maybe close to this. So it's really good to also keep around to see what people have done. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's that's one thing that I really that I really enjoy about Tidy Tuesdays. You can, I mean, it, it's a fun challenge just individually, but it's also really cool to see uh, the other angle that people take on it. And there there are some folks out there that are just, oh gosh, they're they're artists and magicians. The things they come up with, you go, holy smokes, that's amazing. And and oftentimes they they post their code as well, so you can kind of see, oh, this is how they did that. This is how they did that. And you can kind of incorporate that into um, into some maybe some of the visualizations that you do in the future. Yeah. Hi. I'm not sure if I can just speak. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi. So yeah. Uh, sorry, I joined in late. I only just now saw it. So I'm Amit Levinson. No um, and yeah, I, was, I really wanted to continue what you were saying. That I don't know if I'm actually getting better in plotting, or I'm just having a bigger, a bigger corpus of you know code and stuff I used. Uh, so that's definitely something I found a beneficial in Tidy Tuesday, as in exploring and trying out new things and you know stuff I wouldn't necessarily find in a regular data set. Um, so yeah, I was just I wanted to add in that too. That's great. Thanks, Ahmed, and welcome. I, I've noticed we've had uh, a few people uh, join since we started. Um, one thing that we were doing, I think, before before you joined was just doing a quick introduction where we mentioned our name, where we're calling from, and um, also what our favorite data visualization package is. So last week, we were saying what our favorite geom was. This week, we're saying what our favorite package is. And some of the responses have been TreeMapify, GG Repel, DeepLyR, and uh, and GG Text. So Ahmet, uh, you've already introduced yourself, but may, if you don't mind, maybe we can go back to you and just just see what your favorite database package is. So you caught me by surprise. Yes, um, I apologize. <laughs> no problem at all. Um, so again, Amit Levinson uh, from Israel. Uh, I already forgot what I'm supposed to say as a background, but um, I guess. Hmm. It's a good question. Well, I guess saying ggplot would be pretty trivial. So I imagine a, somewhere, I think ggtext, which I lately was able to install through DevTools. I was having like really problems installing packages from GitHub. So by the time eventually when I was able to install it, it's just amazing the ability to color text in titles and remove legends. Um, so I think it's really great. Excellent. Thanks, Ami. Welcome. Any other folks want to do an intro? Feel free to just either jump in or use the the raise your hand uh, button in the lower left hand of the, the screen there. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yep. OK, cool. Uh, I had some issues setting up my app. Um, and I'm like also trying to submit assignments for school right now. So I'm like multitasking. <laughs> um, so fair, that's fair. Um, my name is Thomas. Um, I am a PhD student at Northwestern University in linguistics. Um, I'm trying to get more practice with data visualization and whatnot. 
Um, so I've been having fun with the challenge lately. Um, and then I found the Fishalize package with the fish palettes uh, recently, and I've been having fun like playing around with that. Excellent. Yeah, that's that's currently my favorite uh, ggplot color palette package. I, I have trouble spelling the fish species names, but <laughs> the, the, the colors you get from it are just, oof, they're beautiful. I should, I should try that one out. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Fishualize. Yeah. All right. Any other folks that, uh, that just joined want to do uh, a quick intro? Yeah, go ahead. I think, uh, yeah, go ahead, Golden Boy. Hi, how are you? I'm Luca. Um, and I recently joined the Tidy Tuesday challenge. It was uh, pretty fun. And um, well, I'm using uh, the, this quarantine time to study Art of Data Science, the book. Um, now I've kind of finished it. Well, actually, I, I skipped the part of modeling because so far I don't need it. But uh, I'm so curious about. Uh, always my next step in this and the tie Tuesday is a really great uh, opportunity to exchange ideas and uh, to yeah to look at the code of people it's super nice i like it so for the package i think um i don't know i'm i kind of stuck with gm line and gm i'm oh, sorry with gg plot and uh well that's uh, that's it so far <laughs> all right i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna check some uh, some other packages i think i'm quite attracted by maybe it's called G gm gg extra something like that to okay oh yeah okay i think that's my next uh, step because it looks quite useful actually and uh, so pretty so yeah that's it excellent yeah i've i've heard of the gg extra package but i forget what it does off the top of my head. Does anyone in the meeting know about it and can give me a quick summary? You can basically visualize distributions uh, outside of the, the main um, panel of your main plot. So you can visualize other plots on top of your plots, just like with the sort of minimal um, uh, team, let's say. Um, I'm, I'm trying to... Yeah. Oh, that, those are the ones where I see kind of the, um, sometimes the density plots or the histograms uh, above and to the side. Is that the, is that what I'm thinking of? Okay. I'm yeah. Seeing, yeah. I'm yeah. Seeing, uh, when you look for it, it's a capital E. So that's, um, it doesn't necessarily come up if you're searching CRAN and depending how you're searching. Uh, so. Okay. Um, another cool. one that I want to look at that I haven't played with enough yet is, um, GG Easy, which they put out in January, I think. Um, it's like a tutorial for ggplot. So it'll do some things for you a little bit more automatically, but you can it has a setting where you can have it tell you, okay, what did you what you do to, to fix that? And then you can oh. kind of learn ggplot some like you know, theme extras and things like that that you might not know how to do. So um, I, I haven't actually used it. I just talked to uh, Jonathan Carroll, who's one of the authors at um, our studio comp, and then never got around to it because the world went crazy. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's one I really want to check out. That sounds really cool. I mean, I know there are a lot of folks in the RStats community that are um, teachers or instructors, so like the pedagogical aspect of that is is really neat because I, I think yeah. I think for some people, like it it becomes kind of just automatic how to do certain things. But I know when I was starting a few years ago, even even just getting rid of the legend, I was like, how do you do that? And I would see <laughs> it in different ways. Like, is it theme show legend equals none? Do you do it in the actual geome? Like, there's there's like half a dozen ways to do the legend. So even even learning some of those simple aspects um, and kind of building it up piece by piece sounds really neat. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's the most of the um, functions in it have a teach argument. So if you set teach equals true, it tells you uh, what it did and in like 
helps walk you through. So I like that one quite a lot. And it was funny because when they released it, people on Twitter were like, oh, you're why do this? Th you know, you can just learn how to do it right. And they're like, well, right. You can learn how to do it right. And we built that <laughs> in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but not everyone knows how to do it. Just, yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Sounds like a godsend for, for professors. Yeah. <laughs> And so, I know so, that. I'm, sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I spoke already. So I heard an intriguing comment yesterday about AES. I think John posted something as well, where it does not need to be tied into ggplot at all. So yeah. And I was <laughs> completely blown away by that because I always thought they were kind of wedded together. So I'm now looking into that actually because it was so interesting. Yeah, that's my my weird uh, quirk of how I do ggplot, but I I like it. I um I find the code easier to read, uh, and you can do more with like splitting up your plots and doing things programmatically. And the idea is for people who haven't who didn't see the crazy Twitter threads, is um you can do the a aes command just plus into your your ggplot pipe or whatever you want to call it chain um not inside of ggplot not inside of a gm but just on its own um there most of the time it doesn't make any difference but you can like i like to set up a base plot where i just pipe my data into ggplot add on themes um maybe set up scales things like that and just set that as a variable and then you can add aesthetics and geoms to do whatever you might be doing for a bunch of separate plots. Um, I don't know that it comes up that often, but because it occasionally comes up for me, now I always just have the aesthetic separated out. Um, you can also like when you're while you're coding, you can have a few different lines of possible aesthetics of oh, what does that look like against each of these different variables, and just comment out the ones you're not using, um, which is very slightly easier than doing it in <laughs> the, the ggplot call itself. So, I mean, I love the idea of that more than I can even say because it <laughs> you can have one chunk, and then you can standardize it across any plot that you're making like your aesthetics at least yeah um i mean the other the other crazy part that comes with that is that you can set like parts of your ggplot as variables like assign them to a variable and then plus them together to make your plots um so that's helpful too <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like you also made a couple of sworn enemies on Twitter, John. By, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, but but it is it is interesting. I'm, I mean, um, I think I, re I replied to that. Uh, or you replied to my comment. I replied to yours. I'm I'm gonna kind of test out doing that instead because I can see that there would definitely be some really cool uh, cool benefits to doing that. Yeah, it was funny because it was fun to see like such a nerdy. I mean, it wasn't really an argument even, but people taking up sides of no you've got to put it here you got to put it there um but that's that's the thing about r is there are four ways at least four ways to do anything in r i think um and this was just another of those <laughs> yeah 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 it's probably about as argumentative as the r, r community gets <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i know i know that any time anything related to like syntax or formatting when you're talking to people who code that's like a real, it can be really contentious sometimes. So I think we're getting little flavors of that, but it, it's, it's also kind of interesting, I think to see the people are also talking about the order that they put the different aspects of their ggplot call in. And yes. there's, it's blowing my mind personally, because there's so many things that I haven't even, even considered. Like I kind of built up my own just from I don't know what I felt seemed right, but pe the things that people are doing and the rationale they have for them is super, super interesting for, for me to see. So I'm definitely gonna have to test out some different slight tweaks to kind of my workflow. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah I haven't seen any yet that 
um, really grabbed me, but I need to go through those threads because um, when people have a reason, sometimes, like even when it is just a one time in a hundred, it's useful. That one time, it might be super useful. So um, having that can be good. I, I'm also a big, big fan of the plus null at the end of your uh, ggplot chain because you can that way you can comment out the last line without it breaking, basically. Well, tell tell us more about that. What so that so if you have you know ggplot plus aes plus geom whatever plus another geom plus facet blah 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 and let's say you want to take off one geom um, which is at the end of your chain normally if you just comment that out uh, you have that hanging plus in the previous line but if at the bottom of the chain you just put null it then it doesn't matter what you comment out it'll run because uh, you can add null and it doesn't do anything. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm taking a note right now. That's great. Yeah. I, like, I, I, like, I like that one. <laughs> the, other, the other reason that can be nice, um, the way I was first introduced to it, is you could put uh, an if at one of your pluses, and you could say, if this certain condition is met, add this geom, else null. And then you'll add that null on and it doesn't do anything. Um, so yeah, knowing that you can add null to ggplot as much as you want, and it doesn't make any difference. Um, I say that it's possible it makes a very slight difference in the object, like adding a bit to the size of the object or something like that. Um, but other than that, it doesn't make any difference. And I don't, I actually don't think it makes a difference. I, I think the object is identical either way. Yeah, it should, I think it should be identical. It, it, yeah, there. I don't know how much the object knows about how it was made. I haven't dug into grobs enough. Um, there might that's where it would be. It would be like literally the text of the code that was used to generate it would be slightly longer, but oh, okay. oh. yeah. Um, but yeah, in most situations, it shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Yeah, but if, 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 if you talk about um, the aesthetics bit, putting the aesthetics outside <laughs> of the ggplot, um, I, I understand what you're trying to solve uh, because I, I find the same problem. So right now I haven't mastered it very well. So I try out something and I see it doing something different. So basically I think what you're trying to solve is having the aesthetics as what I would call global um, variables or something like that. Something that can be accessed by all the geons. Yes, yes, definitely that. Okay. Um, let me see. I've got one example in one of these Twitter threads that I think um, explains it well, but I need to find. I'll, I'll share that when I find it. Um, but yeah, that general idea, and and part of the uh, of that is, you know, let's say you have the same y-axis on a bunch of plots. Yeah. but a different x-axis you can just set the y-axis as global okay. and then in each yeah. geom set the x-axis -ax um which i can show you in a minute <laughs> cool. too much activity on twitter i can't find where i was talking about this um yep there we go uh And in the chat, so, um, but yeah, there's a, a lot of you know again arguing going on about this, um, and it's fun to see. And like even, um, uh, cool but useless, who kind of started some of the argument, it said, "Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna do that for sure." So, it's again, it's an R argument where people <laughs> don't argue that vehemently. Um, at least not on Twitter. Okay, but I get it. Uh, I have to look at it. I think I saw a picture somewhere about uh, aesthetics being the devil, but I, I went <laughs> over it, but I think it's the one. Yes, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
lots of fun stuff. If any folks um, have any other thoughts on that or, or any thoughts on the, the last couple um, Tidy Tuesdays, the Animal Crossing or the uh, the Broadway shows? We, I know we've had a few people join in the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about the Animal Crossing. I was thinking about actually trying to do a business card using the page down package uh, for one of the animals, but I just figured out I don't know any CSS. So a kind of like a, I was fiddling around there and eventually I gave up, but it, it's amazing what you can do there. It, was, it just blew my mind. Um, so it was interesting to try that. It's a neat idea. I like, um you know, the variety of things that people do with Tidy Tuesday. Yeah, that's that's really cute. I'm I'm trying to picture what would be on a business card for Tom Tom Nook, which is kind of the raccoon character. Um, and it's it's so uh, it's so not I don't know about rare, but it's not that common for uh, Tidy Tuesdays to have images associated with them, at least at least that I've seen. So I saw that there were a lot of people that that really took advantage of the image links to incorporate them into their into their plots this week as well. That was really cool. Yeah, I think somebody did a shiny app with uh, images showing up appearing when you know when you click a, a gender and a personality, and then the image appears, which is also amazing. The abilities and uh, you can just get the image and off the web and implement it. Yeah, the fact that people have put together shiny apps for this, it, I think, is is a testament to how into Animal Crossing they are. Because I'm I'm sure it wasn't a small a small task to to do some of those. I've seen some really impressive ones. Uh, I don't know if anyone uh, watches the um, the Dave Robinson's uh, Tidy Tuesday screencasts that he does. Uh, but I, I think he did one this week, um, but I wasn't able to catch it. Does anyone know what exactly he ended up doing with this, this particular data set, Animal Crossing? Yeah, I did watch it and he got into something um, called LSTM and I could be completely off this, but uh, I think it, uh, you know, um, does any, I, I don't know the, like, the actual concept of it. Uh... <laughs> Um, right. neural network architecture. Yeah, I was going to say, you mean as in a neural network or? Uh, there's... I didn't watch or... it. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, there is a, it, was it a text, text analysis? So I was going to go down the path of text analysis, but he actually took it, he went another way with it. He, um, uh, Oh, yeah. I think I think it's how to um, how to attributes tracked along with each other or something to that effect. And I I know I'm saying it all wrong, but I didn't really get the conceptual nature of what he was doing. Um, but... I I watched it partly, and uh, actually he was doing topping modeling, so he used all the text uh, from the from the comments from the reviewers to identify uh, specific topics that were like the most common topics there. He identified at the beginning four, then he extended to five, six topics. And uh, but in the end, it was a little bit biased because many comments uh, had the bug. Uh, he, he thought there was a bug in the, in the website because many comments had their strings uh, repeated a lot, like there was like one line, like comparing seven, eight times. It was a little bit biasing the the analysis, so he had to do some some cleaning for uh, for removing that. And after that, he did basically yeah this topic modeling where he was like basically separating the the, the good con the good topics like uh, the topics that were like uh, supporting the. The, um, the the game and the ones that were uh, attacking it a little bit and then he found also a trend uh it looks like at the beginning uh, it was, there was a lot of bombing now i remember so a lot of comments were like uh, rating it like zero it's really terrible game it's don't play 
but uh, many others they were like uh, doing like like um, supporting this uh, this game. So there was a kind of bipolarized um, sort of clustering of uh, of the comments. So it was uh, all around this. So I just looked it up. He did what is called STM or the structural topic model, where he was trying to look at how. Um, uh, so I guess the reviewers, like uh, like he just mentioned, um, he was trying to see how uh, per document how the covariates were tracking. So like positive comments versus negative comments. So it's called it was called STM his modeling. And was he using um, tidy text, his text package? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd seen that. Uh, I think uh, uh, in the last month or two, I think he was using um, Space ER, which is based off something in the Python environment, which yep. which, was, which looks really cool. I think he was using it for for named entity recognition. So rather than breaking things out into single words, he would be trying to figure out what you know, there could be like something that would be maybe two or three words long that is its own individual thing, I'm trying to recognize yeah. that. I uh, I looked it up, but I'm I'm really scared to uh, to try and get Python installed because I've heard so many horror stories. But it, it looks like a really cool package to be able to use, really interesting applications. Um, if it uses Reticulate, which I assume it does, um, the, the latest reticulate makes the Python part of the um, installation really painless. Um, you don't have to do much of anything. So uh, at least the last time I set it up, it was relatively simple. Um, I say that now I've done it on a different machine and it was just a huge headache because that's how Python is. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes installing things just makes you want to burn your computer <laughs> never know what you're gonna get all oh, okay yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to check it out and not, not let that uh, scare me then so it, it could be painless it seems it like. could be <laughs> in linux python usually is painless but in windows yeah it is very painful actually Windows, I had the least problem, at least working okay. through our studio. Our studio just handles it as long as you have our tools. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, no, because <laughs> I try using Anaconda in Windows and it messed up my system. So I ended up yeah. working on Linux. That was, I, at first, I tried to set it up myself and that was a pain. But then I just said, yeah. hey, reticulate. Um, I don't remember what the command is, but it's like, um, set up or something that they have that it just does it <laughs> so oh, um, cool. i'll try that yeah <laughs> pi install um i think anyway yeah i have found it like it's not it's not 100 percent easy but um Often, <laughs> like you said, sometimes it's painless, so worth a shot, I suppose, eh, John? Yeah, you never know. And then seven hours later, <laughs> you've got it working. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been there before. Excellent. W one thing. Um, uh, anyone feel free to jump in if you have any any additional thoughts. I, th I thought maybe one question I might ask the group is, uh, are there any kind of interesting data sets or data that you've seen out there that you'd like to see featured in a, in a future Tidy Tuesday? I mean, I know just from kind of talking with friends and kind of searching the web, sometimes I, it popped into my mind, oh, that'd be really neat. I'm just wondering if others have had that experience as well. Okay. So, yeah, so I, I found a line, kind of like, it's a little split up, but um, a data set, I saw somebody scrape off, uh, I think it's Leafly, 
of uh, in my thesis, I focus on drug markets. So it's a, a basically a data set about cannabis strains. So I'll see. I'll, that was like I looked at. It, I was like, wow, I'd love to see what people uh, get out of it. So that was interesting. That'd be really cool. I, I see that in the chat, uh, John has very helpfully added a link for where you can submit uh, data sets to Tidy Tuesday. So I I've, myself have taken advantage of that a few times in the last couple of weeks, and uh, it's pretty fun. And I know that I know that Tom Mock really appreciates it having some having some choice when uh, he's got to come up with something every week. So definitely check that out. Definitely. Yeah, Ahmed. I think that uh, my my uh, my fellow countrymen and women would uh, find that data set particularly interesting. Canada just legalized marijuana cannabis in the last year or so, so it's, it's been an interesting time for us here in Canada. Alrighty, so I'm I'm just taking a look at the time. For me, it's uh, it's five minutes to the hour. So uh, maybe we can kind of start wrapping things up. Uh, once again, I, I apologize if there's any confusion for anyone, uh, either with the the meeting or or the times. Um, I did not know that I was moderating today until this morning, so it was a little bit slapdash in terms of getting things set up. But I hope that everyone that was able to join had a fun time and, and found some value in the discussion. Um, maybe maybe in the last few minutes that we have, um, if anyone has any thoughts on maybe what they what they liked about the meeting that they got out of it, what maybe um, me or another moderator could do differently next time to improve things or, or even things like whether or not the, the time or the day works well for them. I'd, I'd be really curious to get some feedback on that because I know that Cedric and a lot of who set up the first meeting and a lot of the other folks um, that are part of the R stats community would really love to see this this type of meeting flourish and have it as kind of a weekly or, or a bi-weekly thing that uh, would be a great resource and forum for people. So if anyone has any thoughts, I'd be I'd be really really curious to to hear them. I just, I definitely agree. I'd like to see it more often. Um, probably, I don't know, figuring out some sort of re regular schedule, but changing because obviously Tidy Tuesday is a worldwide thing. So different times work for different people for sure. Um, I know it's been with all the virtual meetups. I had a meetup uh, yesterday that I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to that. And then I realized it was in Australia and it would be at 3 a.m. for me. So no, I'm not definitely going to that one. But finding a time that works, or finding, I think, multiple times that work is how it's going to have to go. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I especially feel for for folks from um, from Australia or or uh, <laughs> Eastern Asia because I think they often get kind of uh, you know kind of cut caught in a, a an awkward position for a lot of the virtual meetings that are like in the middle of the night their time. So definitely agree with that. Anyone else have any thoughts? Oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I have to say, I love the unstructured nature of this, where we are not either coding or looking at data sets, but we are discussing, you know, all things odd, which is, I think, really awesome. Like, it's it's a lot more laid back. You have, like, less whatever goals you want to meet at the top of the hour. And it's just, I think, I feel like it's, it's more casual. And um, it's, like, kind of definitely stimulates discussion. So it would be kind of nice to, you know, observe the cool happenings through the week and then maybe report on, like, for, for example, I found John's um, a Twitter thread, like, really interesting because it, it showed me something that I had never even thought about. So it's kind of nice to have an unstructured format, I feel, for this. Um, I would request maybe a little later in the day because, like, it's, um, I, I'm in Dallas, Texas, so it started at 10, which I know is, like, everyone has similar issues, but... One thing I wanted to find out is if later in the day, like three-ish or, okay, whatever. I mean, I'm just going to put that out there, but I do love the format of the whole meeting. So thank you. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I in an ideal world, we'd probably have multiples of these uh, each week 
so that it works for whoever can make it. Um, but yeah, I I definitely like this. I wasn't sure what the you know what it would be like, but it's nice to just have people to talk to about R. So um, thank you for organizing it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and and thank you, of course, to Cedric, who's not here for for organizing it initially. I I definitely agree with you, John. I mean, I know. Uh, like my wife loves me, but whenever I start talking about Tidy Tuesday and R, she she says, "Oh, you know, my ears are bleeding from how bored I am." <laughs> so it's it's really wonderful to talk with with people who who share similar interests. And you know, I would never be able to chat with her about uh, you know where to put the aesthetics call in a G. <laughs> <you know>, so. <laughs> Much appreciated to everyone for that. Yes, and thank you very much for organizing it, really, putting it all yeah. together. So thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Amit. Yeah, it's it's really wonderful to to chat with everyone. A any any final thoughts? I'm I'm kind of selfishly interested in in what you thought of the the moderation. I, <laughs> I it sounds like it sounds like the the kind of like more unstructured approach and just chatting was um, was pretty good. There were a couple, you know, a few times where I kind of tried to jump in with prompting some questions, but, uh, you know, also trying not to kind of uh, be, you know, like deep, like steer the conversation in too rigid a way. Do people feel there was too much of that, not enough of that, just enough? Um, I'm open to constructive criticism, so please be honest. <laughs> I, think, I think you did a great job. Um, okay. You know, we had some little pauses, which is natural when you're gonna have just a conversation. Yeah, um, and with the I don't know, especially it's challenging yeah. with the with the pauses, and sometimes there's latency stuff as well. So sorry, right. John. Go ahead. Yeah, no, just I don't know if the unstructured format would be good all the time, um, mm -hmm. but I think as a type of meeting that we do for Tidy Tuesday meetup, whatever we want to call this thing, um, I think it's good to have for sure. And I actually have to hop off because I have a uh, another conversation about Tidy Tuesday that I need to go to right now. Okay. All right. Well, thanks uh, for joining us, John. We'll, yeah. We'll thank you. you. Yeah. All right. See ya. Great. Anyone else have any final thoughts before we before we wrap up here? Yeah, I have, I have one last one. So it's something I've been thinking about because so when I'm doing my visualizations, I want to do something like trying to answer a question, something new. Uh, and, and of course, then later on, I think about how to present it artistically, which probably I'm not so good at. Um, but anyway, the issue is that since I'm trying to come up with a question, sometimes I want to come up with, like, with a measure or a metric. And uh, I spend some time thinking, is this right? Does it make sense? So I'm thinking about a way of uh, sharing this raw idea first, for example, on, on Twitter to see what people say or like, no, that doesn't make sense. Maybe this makes sense. Then I, uh, you know, I continue with the visualization. Yeah. So right now I have. Maybe to just write about it, describe what I want to do. Then the other option is do a raw um, visualization to see what people say about that. Um, I, I don't know. I don't want because the visualization means that I'm sharing uh, a half-baked thing. So I'm still on a part about about what to do. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a challenge. Yeah, I, for for me, um, you you cut out a little bit. Uh, uh, you cut out a little bit there in the middle. I don't know if that was on my end or yours. Um, but it, if I understood the cr the question correctly, it sounds like you're talking about kind of when you're in the middle of putting together a visualization. You kind of want to do like check-ins with people when you kind of have like half of an idea or like a more of a conceptual idea and you want to kind of check in with people hey does this make sense yeah that and you're kind of figuring out how what's the best way to do that is that is that kind of what you're getting at yeah yeah exactly oh okay um yeah that's that's definitely a challenge i mean i i know that um i mean i've done that a few times with like using the hashtag um R stats often often gets you retweeted by one of the R stats accounts, and and I've I've had some questions um, or check-ins with people on visualizations and types of things that have gotten you know people chatting and people coming with helpful advice. So uh, for me, I know that's one that's one possible route to go with. And there's usually there's usually people that 
in the community that are are eager to kind of jump in and engage and and um, you know offer some advice. So that's one possible route to go on Twitter. All right. Oh uh, yeah, I'll definitely try it one time. Do you think there could be also an idea for a new Slack channel? Like, yeah, uh, I, I don't know, feedbacks and uh, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, that's another good point, Luca. I think, um, I, actually, I think even even if you went on the, the r for ds uh, Slack channel, um, you might even be able to get some feedback there too. I, th I think, yeah, because I think there's an actual channel for that. Like they've got things about a special channel for help, for ggplot2 help. So that could be another potential area for, you know, checking in, am I on the right path? Does this make does this make yeah. sense? And also, since it's on Slack, it kind of gives people an opportunity to be a little bit more comprehensive or thorough with their with their feedback, since they're not limited to 280 characters or whatever it is. I actually can relate to the suggestion uh, of Alan because this week I did something uh, a little bit uh, out of the schemes. Um, because I, I was thinking about, uh, okay, I didn't find the, the adjectives of the personalities of the Animal Crossing data set very um, explaining, like uh, very informative, right? So I, I went to, the, to, to the Google and, uh, and I tried to, to, know, to know what uh, like Snooty was meaning, what uh, Peppy was meaning. <laughs> I was really curious about that. So uh, just a little bit to to make something a little bit more creative, I I gave to each personality a score from one to ten that would define the social the sociality of the person. Okay, so like uh, the cranky was one, the 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 the, 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 the lazy was like uh, six. <laughs> or the, um, the, the 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 peppy was the good one. It was. I think it was 10, something like that. So then I figure out, okay, maybe I can use this course, I can multiply these scores between each other to find uh, like a, a probability that they could uh, organize a party together because they were born on the same date. So I found this idea a little bit like crazy. I think any station would maybe uh, shout at me i don't know but uh, in the end you i can pretend that that score given that can some it can uh, it can it can be maximum 100 can be a kind of probability that the party is going to happen between two people that were born the same date so that did actually i wanted some feedback about that because uh, it was a little bit like uh, yeah crazy thought but yeah i did it in the end because i was not finding any other uh, Curiosities because I'm not uh, good uh, text mining, so I did something about the the birthdays. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that's a really fun kind of angle to take, and I, I I think it's perfect for this data set because it's such a silly. I mean, it's a it's a data set that's about a game where you're making friends with animal villagers. So to kind of figure out are these two going to have a party on on you know a birthday. I think that's a really fun thing to do. Yeah, so, yeah. Really cool. uh, I, I've seen like the, um, I don't know if you followed the, um, I think it's called Data Urban, the this Twitter channel, and they interview people from data science. And they interviewed um, Tom Mock um, like one week ago. And they actually asked him, so what is the actually the border between uh, I mean, what makes like a pretty visualization, a super nice uh, analysis, uh, really well uh, explained and uh, plotted uh, from uh, like the other side is actually that you're not doing things correctly, right? From a statistical point of view or... So actually there is, uh, yeah, there is this, uh, there should be some balancing uh, and that could be actually, this can relate to the, to the question that was doing um, Alan. I mean, you want to know sometimes where you are going, if you're doing something completely crazy or it can be somehow robust, um, just as uh, in the end, David Robinson uh, does in his videos because he always like uh, is questioning, okay, this is uh, maybe too far. We're going too far or like we should stay solid with the solid graph or 
yeah, that's uh, that's actually a border that I cannot really grasp now. Uh, I uh, I'm curious about getting better on that. That's why I support the online idea. Yeah, and I, th I think the other nice aspect of that, Luca, is that, I mean, because there's a regular cadence of, of Tidy Tuesdays, I mean, it happens every week. If you're kind of exploring something where you're kind of thinking to yourself, all right, this is kind of a, a, a different angle, and I don't know if it's going to work out, but let's give it a shot. I mean, if, if it ends up just being a total failure, then oh, well, you know, and then there's a next, there's a data set next week. So it's, it's kind of nice to have because it, it kind of gives you that sandbox to play in where you can say, I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But, you know, if it does work, it'll be kind of a cool, different way of looking at things. I think that, you know, you might as well go for it, right? Definitely. Uh, I would like also, um, from the other side, some person that would destroy my idea is my, if my idea is not like uh, very nice. I mean, from uh, yeah, uh, self-improvement um, side. Yeah, definitely. So I, I hate to kind of cut the conversation short, but uh, a few a few folks are uh, are heading out, and then um, it's uh, it's the middle of the day for me on a work day, so I actually have to get ready for a work call that's coming up. So uh, I I think I might wrap things wrap things up if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. okay. Once again, thank you so much, everyone, for um, for joining. It was a really fun conversation, and hope to see everyone at uh, at the next one. And and we'll be we don't have a date for that, but we'll be probably chatting about that and uh, doing a survey on the R for Data Science Slack chat. So please join that and uh, and keep up to date on uh, on the next meeting. Okay.